Hello everybody and welcome to Windows Phone Daily's Nokia Lumia 920 video review. My name is Saad Hashmi and we're going to break down everything we love and don't love about Nokia's new Windows Phone 8 powered flagship. As you probably already know, the Nokia Lumia 920 continues the Finnish company's reputation of amazing bold design, hard edges, curved glass, and a curved unibody construction this time. Along the front is a large 4.5 inch pure motion HD plus display with a resolution of WXGA or 1280 by 768. As we mentioned before, the glass on the front of the phone is curved and is actually built of Corning's Gorilla Glass 2, which is lauded for its durability against scratches and cracks. Along the front of the device, there is also a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera, the earpiece, and a proximity center along with the usual fare of AT&T and Nokia logos. Along the back of the device, there is of course Nokia's 8.7 megapixel pure view rear facing camera with an LED flash. And going down a little bit more, you can see the rest of the body, which in this case is a glossy red finish. The 920 is offered in a range of colors in both soft touch and glossy varieties. The bezel surrounding the Lumia 920's camera is apparently built out of zirconium, which Nokia says is extremely scratch resistant. As you can see, it looks very beautiful, almost jewelry-like, especially with the contrast between the dark gray and the red. Along the right spine of the device, you can see the volume controls near the top, the power button in the middle, and the camera shutter key along the bottom. The shutter key in particular is one of the most comfortable shutter keys we've ever used featuring a very responsive feel. Along the Lumia 920's left side is nothing. So if you're left-handed, you might want to consider that. On the top of the phone, in the center, you can see a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a micro SIM tray along to the left, and nothing on the right, except for a small noise-canceling microphone. The bottom is home to the Nokia Smile, with the micro USB port in the center and two speakers along the side and those two little screws adding a lot of personality on the left and right corners. The Lumia 920's thickness is only 10.7 millimeters which is down from the Nokia Lumia 900 and the weight is a pretty porky 185 grams. It won't bother most people but on a long phone call your arm will probably get tired. Overall, I'd say Nokia has hit a home run with the Lumia 920's design. It's big, bold, and beautiful, and I don't think you'd run into it very often in public, especially with the vibrant colors. The 4.5-inch Pure Motion HD Plus display is overall a pretty huge improvement from the WVGA displays Windows phones have had to put up with in the past. Text is extremely legible, the colors are extremely accurate, especially for being an LCD, but the blacks aren't quite as deep as the Lumia 900's AMOLED screen, for example. Speaking of the display's quality, the Lumia 920 features a 331 pixel per inch panel thanks to the 4.5 inch display and matching WXGA resolution. Essentially, this means that there's more pixels in here than an iPhone 5. Overall, you can see the comparison of the text between our last-gen Lumia 900 and this Lumia 920 and the difference is pretty staggering. Pixels are apparently obvious on the Lumia 900, whereas the Lumia 920, they've been suppressed to the point where you can't really see them. The screen is extremely responsive and handles pretty well in general. The only thing that I'm not quite used to yet is the size. I'm really used to the Lumia 900's 4.3 inch display and 4.5 inch is bordering a little big, even though I'm six foot four and have pretty monster hands. One big perk of the display is sunlight readability. In direct sunlight, we could easily distinguish colors and text and read it just perfectly fine. Texts, emails, articles, whatever. Uh, it's still not 100% perfect because you'll get some glare, especially because of the curved glass. You'll see some light fractions that kind of distort the image, but overall, it's about on par with the Lumia 900's daylight performance. The only disappointing aspect of the Pure Motion HD Plus's performance overall 
is the fact that its side-to-side -side viewing angles are a bit lacking. As you can see as I tilt the device left and then right, or in this case up and then down, you can see there's a big drop-off in the brightness and it's a little bit harder to see what's on the screen. Another neat trick found in the display of the Lumi 920 is a feature called Super Sensitive Touch. This is a technology that has been licensed from Synaptics and is found exclusively in the Lumi 920 and the Lumi 820 as well as other variants. Essentially what this means is that you can control the screen with any kind of pointed object. You can use gloves and use the phone, you can use a pen and use the phone, you can use a phone and use the phone, pretty much anything that has some kind of physical presence can manipulate stuff on the phone and does it surprisingly accurately. You can see here I'm just using a headphone jack from one of my headphones and it's controlling it extremely accurately, plus it's not scratching up the screen which is a nice plus. Of course if you don't want any deviant minded friends of yours using the Lumia 920 with let's say a big ass knife, you might want to turn off super sensitive touch in the settings. Speaking of pure, let's talk about Nokia's pure view camera. The company has gone to great lengths to emphasize just how revolutionary PureView in the Lumia 920 can be, but PureView in this device is not the same as the technology found in the 808 PureView, a Symbian device released earlier this year. Instead, the Lumia 920 uses what's called floating lens technology, where the lens is suspended in liquid inside the phone and absorbs different shocks. So for example, when you're riding a bicycle, like the infamous video Nokia tried to use to promote this phone, it should not vibrate nearly as much as on normal camera phones because the liquid surrounding the lens is absorbing each and every shock. So how does it work out in reality? Pretty well. Video recordings on the Lumia 920 come out incredibly steady. Coupling that with smooth 1080p video makes for a pretty lethal camcorder. When it comes to photos, the Lumia 920 is extremely good in some areas, but disappointing in others. One of the other neat tricks enabled by the floating lens technology found in the 920 is the fact that low light photos become incredibly bright to the point where it defeats almost every other smartphone camera on the market. This is because the camera can stay suspended without absorbing too many shocks and stay open for a longer period of time absorbing more light. The end results were impressive with the Lumia 920 beating the Lumia 900 which is notoriously bad for its camera performance but also a Samsung Galaxy S3 and the iPhone 5. Color us impressed. Yet when it comes to daylight, I found the Lumia 920 a little more disappointing. Photos often came out blurry and details often were smudged out from what looks like an over-aggressive softening in the camera software. Nokia is already committing to a software update in the near future, but for now, the PureView camera isn't quite up to snuff with the rest of the competition. When it comes to a Lumia device, you're not just buying it for the hardware, you're also buying it for Nokia's huge library of exclusive software, which are highlighted by Nokia Drive, Nokia Maps, Nokia City Lens, and finally Nokia Music. For the most part, City Lens and Music have not changed, so in this video we'll be focusing on the new changes that have come to Nokia Maps and Nokia Drive Plus Beta. Really the most noteworthy changes that have come to Nokia Maps and Nokia Drive Plus Beta for Windows Phone 8 are the fact that the two apps can now share downloaded maps, which previously they could not. Another big change is that the two integrate with each other. So for example, if you look up directions in Nokia Maps, you're just one tap away from launching Nokia Drive and going into the navigation dashboard. The last feature found in the Nokia Lumia 920 is probably the most noteworthy, which is wireless charging. Using the Qi standard for accessories built by Nokia as well as a litany of other partners, the Nokia Lumia 920 can just be placed down on a wireless charging device and begin charging as long as that's plugged into a wall. So essentially there's no USB cables you have to plug in or get in the right way and direction. You just plunk it down and it starts charging and it works really well. If you purchase the Lumia 920 on AT&T, they'll throw in a free DT900 wireless charging plate, as you can see here, which came in black. It's not very big, it's a little puck, basically. It's like the size of two pucks 
taped together. For the most part, I love the accessory, but the only qualm I have is the fact that it doesn't really hold the Lumia 920 very well. There's no magnet to be found in here, so the only thing holding the Lumia 920 in place is a small rubber ring about an inch in diameter, with no other rubber grips to hold the device in place. This is a little bit disappointing considering the fact that if you were to just hit a table or wherever you have placed this wireless charger, the phone might end up spinning and might even cause some damage, which I hope will not happen to most people. In the end, I think the Nokia Lumia 920 is going to be a hit, where the Nokia Lumia 900 was a miss. The insanely cool features that we talked about like wireless charging, the super sensitive touch, the PureView camera's optical image stabilization, and more, really set this phone apart, nearly living up to Nokia's claims that this is the world's most innovative smartphone. However, the Lumia 920 does disappoint in a few areas, making sure it's not the world's perfect smartphone. The daylight shots are a little disappointing because of the aforementioned blurriness issue. Meanwhile, the Pure Motion HD Plus display has surprisingly subpar viewing angles for an LCD of its quality, especially considering how pixel dense it is. And then of course, there is the weight and size of the phone, which, while I could get used to, other people may not be able to. Yet all of these issues magically melt away when you take into consideration its price. AT&T is selling this thing for just $99 on contract or $450 off contract, both of which are extremely good deals. Overall, the Nokia Lumia 920 is a great device and it's definitely the best value Windows Phone 8 has to offer, but there's just a few things that keep it from perfection. I'm giving it an 8.5 out of 10. You can read my full review at windowsphonedaily.com, which is featured in the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Leave your thoughts about the Lumia 920 and I'll see you next time.